Yes, we're talking love today. Because it's a season of Valentine. Yes, it is. Because oftentimes when you think love, you think about man, woman, or mother, child, or man, woman is what everybody does. But on the show today, I'm turning the sphere of my camera on a different side. Loving beyond yourself. Not because you want to love, but because you have to love and you love to love. So, am I speaking in riddles? You'll have to stay tuned because I have, do I think maybe about eight wonderful women in the house to tell us what love truly means through the work that they do. And you will be inspired, trust me. This is Seriously Speaking. We'll be back. Now, my first guest on the show today, when you call her name, you probably think about hats. Or then again, you think about fashion. And in more recent time, you think about maybe she does some work for orphans and adoption, but she's extended herself all through her life for others. And I don't know whether it's by accident. She'll be telling us about it in the show. It's my pleasure to introduce Emi Akenzoa, a Thank friend you. from Time Immemorial. It's yeah. nice to have you on set. It's a pleasure to We've be here. We've never done this on TV, you know. We've done markets. Have we done on TV? We haven't. I haven't can't come on recall. My show no, before. I haven't, actually. You know, it's haven't. amazing that you haven't. I just wonder why. John yeah, Trevithy. Here I am. <laughs> That's what people think about when they think about hats. But tell me how you went from hats to doing this. Because I, something tells me that from time, doing for others has always been a way of life for you. Yes, and this it wouldn't be just, I know most people who see me from afar know only about fashion, but all of my life, as far as I can remember really, I have had great compassion for children who are orphaned or vulnerable children in society. I recall when I was much younger, I would get my mom to take me to orphanages and I'd buy little sweeties and biscuits and take for the children. And if you want to get me crying, my siblings know that. Just show me a child who's suffering and it brings tears to my eyes. So it's something I've always um, done, helping out, helping children who I need. And then fashion happened. Fashion, fashion, I, I, I think I was born with fashion. There's something inside of me that my parents always said from when I was a child, they would say to me, they would say, oh, she's gifted. She is able to put things together with her hands and she's able to imagine things and bring them to life. So I heard that growing up as a child as well. Um, so really I'm grateful to God that from very early on, my parents could identify certain things about me and my siblings. And you were able to live it through too? Um, yes, I, I would say yes. You know, in, in the case of uh, the uh, working now in Heritage Homes Orphanage as the managing trustee, I recall, you know, over the years I had supported orphanages, like I said earlier on, and um, I now, I got married and... Um, and life happened. Life happened, at this one. life happened, and it was tough, you know, young girl meets a handsome man, get together and you think you're going to live happily ever after. With your kids. With your kids, <laughs> and I wanted to have uh, four children. My husband thought three were fine, and you know, shortly after, we, um, we got married. Uh, within a month or so, I was pregnant. But six months into the pregnancy, I lost the baby. And that was the beginning of several miscarriages. We had registered an orphanage between my husband and I because it was the sort of thing we felt we would do. Mm -hmm. But uh, when this started, my focus shifted completely. I was in a lot of pain. Uh, it was a very difficult time in my life. And I walk into church one morning and everyone goes, Pastor Etwa is looking for you. He wants you to start a motherless baby's home. That's the pastor home, of your church. The pastor of my church. And I thought, is he kidding? <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm looking for a child. And he's asking me to go and run an orphanage. I've registered an orphanage somewhere. And we haven't touched the papers. But Did you know, he know you had registered an orphanage? No, he didn't. Wow. He didn't. He just, by the leading of God, decided it was me. But you know, there's a principle God works with all the time, really. Now I'm older, now I know more about God. Um, you know, whatever pain God allows you to go through, he wants to use for the good of others. Thank you. I would like to take a break so I take on my next guest to understand, because you've grown to love. You made me understand that I can grow to love. And um, that's an example that we will take. But I'll take a break, and I'll return with another person who's also helping other people have those little bundles of joy that they can love. Thank you, Emma. We'll be back with you shortly. Thank you. 
Yes, welcome back. I'm on set now with a young woman who pastors a lot of people, but she still remains my baby sister because I remember seeing her for the first time under the tree in Yilag, a picture of a young girl who wanted to be one of those competing in some beauty competition. And it's not the type that they wear bikini. It's, <laughs> that's the only kind of competition she could have done. Her name is Ibidu. Ibidu Ajayi then. Today she's Ibidu Yodalo. It's nice to have you on set. It's nice to be here. Because I had to force you here as always. <laughs> But you can't hide, you know, because I, what I find interesting with what you're doing is you agree totally with what my first guest has said. And I found out when I came here that the same man is chairing the two foundations that women are working on. <laughs> Unbelievable. How dumb can you get? But you run a foundation now for people waiting with babies. Tell me about that foundation, Ibiduni. Ibiduni Kudalo Foundation. Mm -hmm. It uh, hmm, was born out of pain. You know, you, when you've uh, waited... When you get married, you expect, like my auntie said, you expect to just have children and everything just, just works out fine for you. But when you start to wait, first year you're not pregnant, I honestly thought first six months I would be pregnant. Yeah, because you're a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I just thought, okay, it will come, it will come. So. I waited a year, two years, and I started getting worried. Like, what's going on? But your husband wasn't? No, he wasn't. He, you know, he still isn't. He keeps saying, you know, what God's going to do it. And whatever God is going to do, let it be left undone. You know, so I held on to that. But as a woman, you know, you would never want to sit down and not do anything. So I started, I got worried, I go to the hospital. And I've been on this journey for 11 years now. It's been tough, you know, especially because in our society, they don't spare you. They? They. Society. I mean, in-laws, friends. Sometimes it's not intentional. It's not on purpose. But when you're waiting on God for a child, you're so sensitive that the little things that people do get to you. They might not even know that it's getting to you. And everybody's running around doing school runs. Your friends, you got married together, are going to, I mean, you guys are together, the kids are coming to yours. And you get back home at night and it's just you and you alone. Your husband is not enough. It gets to a point where you just really want children. You want company. I mean, your husband is your friend, he's your best friend, but you guys go to work together, you come back. After a while, you want to, to plan a family. You, you just want, <laughs> you want people, you want kids around you. What I like about what you're doing is you've chosen to go beyond that. How easy was it for you? Did love play any role in all of that? When you decided, I must extend while I wait? It was, like I said, it was out of pain. After going through IVF 11 times, 11 times is not a joke when you do, when you're doing IVF. And I just, Woke up one morning on my birthday. I usually have this thing I do, you know. I take my, my birthdays, I sit down, I pray. I have a conversation with God. Last year of my life, I achieved this. I would love this to happen the following year. You know, I write things down and we talk. And I said to him, I said, you know what? I am not doing this IVF again. How you're going to do it, I do not know. And I don't care. But I'm <laughs> trusting you completely. And I heard something. In the meantime, just go ahead and help as many people as you can. And it was like, I, I thought I didn't hear properly. And I thought to myself, I should help <laughs> other people while I wait. And honestly, it was as though I felt life. I felt like this is why I was born. And the meaning of my name is Ibitu Ni, sweet to give birth, sweet to have. For the first time, it was as though I was, my life was playing in front of me. And I said, okay, I would obey this voice. And until this one, I picked up, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't have a clue. It's never been done before. So I just said to God, I'm trusting you on this journey and I'm going to obey you completely and totally. You have to promise me something. Every single woman, every single couple, 
that comes, walks through this foundation, mentions this foundation, hears this foundation, sees this foundation, you must give them a child. How it was many a children prayer do you have now? Who, me? Yes, the foundation. The children, we have three. Hmm. A set of twins and a baby girl. I must take a break here because I'm going to extend it to loving beyond. You have beautiful kids. I'm sure even among your kids, you have some children who are not even, who have some disability or the other. Yes. But you love them anyway. Oh, yes. So I'll take a break and I'll return with my other guests. Don't go away. We are coming to the panel. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Abidun. I appreciate it. Truly, I do. Welcome back. Before you start getting overwhelmed about what has love got to do with education, you'll be surprised how sometimes education also gives us an opportunity to show love. That's why the next guest I have, they have worked with children with disability and they have worked with regular kids. And now we're trying to merge a kind of education that allows you to love those who are under your care, regardless of their condition, whether they are normal or beyond normal. It's my pleasure to welcome this team. <laughs> that includes Remy from Thank Little you. Beginnings. Thank you. Ifeko Thanks Thomas from Brook House and Omagomi from Brook, Brook House as well. Now, this marriage happened because, okay, let me start with Remy. Remy, you run Little Beginnings. Yes, I do. What's Little Beginnings about? Um, Little Beginnings is a school. It's a school for children with um, a learning disability, whether physical or neurological. Okay, so Little Begins is, is where we've given children the chance to begin to function. Because the, yeah. the idea normally, children who have disabilities, they are locked away. Yes, you should. Now you've proven that they can be educated. Sure. Right? Yes, they can. You have a school, yes. you have a relationship with Brookhouse, which is what is interesting to me. Yes, it is. We had to find her more like God. <laughs> God ordered her, our steps to her because then we, after we worked with our children for a while and we found out that, okay, this children can learn, okay, because now we're a school. And then for them to also go to the neurotypical school where Brookhouse is, is we, can, we also needed them to, to begin to have social gains, okay? So it wasn't just about academics because yes, we were doing the academics as a school, but then they needed to go out there to see how- You wanted to, you wanted to put them in regular schools? Yes. So they needed to learn how other children, so I'm a five-year-old, how would a five-year-old function? So yes, let them go run around. Weren't you scared? No, we weren't. We weren't. The, the parents were. They were a bit hesitant to say, are you sure? Because like telling children? people that, you know, people yes. like to hide these things. True. Parents hide their children. And that's why we're telling them that you don't need to hide them. We need to bring them out. They need to know what it is like in the, you know, on the outside. Which, which brings Mrs. Thomas in? Because is it, is it, is it love or is it, uh, I don't know what made you decide to accept this, yes, mm. because your, your school is a new school. Yes, it, it is. could very well disturb other parents from coming to your school because they are bringing those kind of children. children. Yeah, mm. um, meeting Remy and doing yeah, yes. the owner of uh, Little Beginnings was um, like a dream come true for me because when I when I decided to go and set up a school to answer God's call, I knew that I was going to work with children with special needs. So before meeting her, I put that on the brochure of the school that we would take children, we would accommodate children with special needs. How I was going to do that, I did not know. <laughs> Where I was going to get the special needs children from, why I did you have? Why did you have a need for that? Yes, because I had, I had an experience with a child, two or three children with special needs at the school where I was working before and um, where I pioneered before and um, it was a Christian school, it was a church school and people brought these children in thinking they had spiritual problems. But working with those children and having them mixed with other children and seeing them develop without, I had no training. I just loved the children. And that was what led me to say, okay, let me go and acquire some skills, read books, learn more. And I knew that I, if I ever had a school, I would have children with special needs. What has love got to do with it, though? I mean, let me, I will come to your mom, because you are a teacher. You are a Montessori teacher. <laughs> and suddenly they bring all these kids to have, you know, did you have, feel any pain or any fear? Yeah, um, initially, because I haven't worked with children with special needs, I was a little bit scared. <laughs> and, um, my head teacher will say, Mr. Magomi, go and pray because they're coming. <laughs> and you have to do something about it. So uh, when they came in with my experience with Montessori, Montessori was actually designed for children with special needs. So really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of handsome materials that you can work with these no, children. No, but then these kids are now in with 
kids who don't have the same kind of problems that they have? Yes, for those materials fitting for both. Okay. Yes, for both categories of mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So with the Montessori materials in place, it wasn't too difficult. And um, the children... So what was the fear? Uh, the fear initially, like, how will I handle them if there's a tantrum? If they just begin to scream, what do I Which do? Which they do. Yes. They do. They yes, they do. They do. And if, how do I go about it? That was my fear because I've not been with them before. But now is, is I'm not actually trained. I'm not skilled in that area. But I'm learning from You've shown that it is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what I'm thinking about yes. here. The reason it's, I'm... It's possible because the children, they love each other, the way they interact. The relationship they have with the regular children, you 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 just can't explain it. If I round up, because I've already we've had two other stories of mm. ways people love. I want you to just tell me what does Valentine mean to you, <laughs> Remy? Valentine, Valentine is showing love to the unlovable. Love, unlovable, <laughs> love to be unlovable. But we do, we would agree that it, I mean it's hap this has helped you think more than yourself. True. Yeah. Yes, for all of you, true. and true. your message to everyone will be. Mom. You can love anybody, it's how much you give. That matters. Okay, but I'm going to keep Amaomi back, I'll keep Remy back, and I'll continue this conversation because it seems like it's easy, but it's not. I need to know a little bit more about the Ibidoni Igodalo Foundation and also how Mr. Kenzo is managing to help people understand that adoption doesn't take anything from you, it actually makes you even bigger than you actually are. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having, us. For having us. We'll see you again next week. Thank you.